What's going on, YouTubies? How's it going? Doing a little better today after my therapy. I did uh, put 10 hits of venom in that knee, five on each side of the kneecap, and uh, it's a little better, uh, a little better today. Hopefully it'll get worked out. But what I wanted to show you, uh, I'm in the shop working on my J my DIY JX3 tree stand saddle slash for old farts okay so here it is I think they came up with the saddle scenario this this JX3 for old timers okay because the saddle um, they kind of pinch your hips in a little bit the experience I've had with them and this and that and, and I, I didn't need that because I got a, like I told you a blown L5 and that's the last one sitting on top of that sciatic wedge in there and it just didn't like it it was torquing it so I like the idea of a saddle for the fact you can get in behind trees and you can shoot 360 out of a tree where you can't with a lot of these. I have an API cl a climber stand. Uh, my buddy's got a summit he's taken out, and I've taken out a bunch of game with that API. Uh, my buddy's taken out a ton of deer with his summit. Uh, they're great stands, but you're kind of limited. I mean, you just, you, you get trying to shoot around the backside of that tree and all that, it's just, it's not, too slick for that. You about have to be facing the animals, the direction they're coming from. Granted, you can come, I can come in my API, I can come around back to my uh, left side. I'm right hand shooter with a bow, I can come around. A gun, you can get away with more stuff. You can use actually the tree and come around on the back side and shoot. But anyway, this is going to make hunting a lot more comfortable. Now, I've test drove this thing a little bit already. Now here it is. This is this. We're we're still in the process of building here. And what this is, this pack frame right here is actually World War II stuff. This thing was made. Get this, guys. This was made by the. Uh, the heck's the name of this? American American Seeding Company. I don't know what state. American Seeding Company. Here's the part number. And it was made on 12-16-43. I came back to Florida from Michigan in about, I, don't, I think it was 73 I came back. 72-73. And when I got back to Florida... Uh, stayed for a period of time with mom and dad and mom said hey they've got a pretty cool movie coming out you might want to see it's at the theater now it was I think the name of it was Braving Alaska and so I went to see that it was a pretty cool flick there was a hunter trapper there and he had this exact pack frame this exact pack frame in that movie and I went to a Army Navy store shortly there after that movie just to stop in I wanted to buy some jungle boots I used to go through them jungle boots uh, quite a bit they were great for Florida hunting and whatnot and I saw the pack frame there <laughs> And I paid, look at that, the price tag is still on it. $10.95 is what I paid for that pack frame. Now, when I pulled this thing out the other day, when I thought about building this contraption, I remembered this pack frame, and I thought, well, heck, I've got half the thing already made. Half the thing's already made. I, got, I need a backpack scenario. Well, this is it. Well, the straps were made out of this material here. These straps are still good shape yet. But if they fail, no big deal. I can, I can take regular uh, ratchet strap material and make it. The straps that were coming down and were tied in down here were, were made of the same material, and they were just rotted. 
the the uh, ropes that were tying this in, this piece of canvas. This piece of canvas, by the way, all the way from 43, is still good shape. The eyelets have a little bit of corrosion on them, but believe it or not, that, that fabric, I tried to push my thumb through it and all to see it's still in good shape. Unbelievable after all these years. But I've kept it. I haven't had it out in weather, so it's still in good shape. So I had plenty of uh, paracord, so I redid this. So you have a little back cushion action here with this. And I got to thinking about this this frame here. I'm sure, I doubt seriously, you, you guys, you might be able to find these still out there. Some kind of, uh, you know, military surplus. But from World War II. But it's even got all these hooks in here. That's what I liked about it, because you can put your meat game meat like that trapper was doing he's putting his meat in bags and he was lashing it too with ropes with all these hooks on here you got them on both sides these hooks so yeah that's the frame it doesn't weigh anything but i got to thinking about it you could create this same thing with quarter inch plywood get you some quarter inch plywood i would treat it okay uh i've got quarter inch in here i'll show you in a minute that i haven't treated because I didn't know if any of this is going to work. But as I'm playing with this, I already test drove this thing on a tree out back. And this thing is going to work. This is going to work, okay? So, but I got to thinking about this. A guy could create this same thing. Take some plywood. Take some plywood about this width here. This thing happens to be... On the outside here, we're looking at right at 15 inches from outside edges here, 15. The, the, the height of this thing, we're looking at 24 inches. 24 inches, and that's higher than your chair here. So I'll have some actually, some, yeah, I'll have, I'll have enough room for head, for a headrest. The JX3, they add a headrest to theirs. Well, with this, I don't need to add a headrest. I've got one right here built in. It's already there. Now, to, if you can't find this, guys, and you want to build what steve building here, you can take plywood, okay? You can put, cut it to dimensions you got here. Put a two by four, say, on the bottom, screw it in, glue it, screw it, and then radius this. Take a body grinder with a coarse and grind a radius on that. So you've got a little bit of room here. Now take mirror glaze wax, mirror glaze wax, and wax that thing three times, 24 hours apart. Wax it. Now you have a mold, all right? Now get you some mat, fiberglass mat. Go down and get you some resin, fiberglass resin. You can go to a boat yard, whatever. Ace Hardware has it. They're a little pricey. Your best bet if you want to build this, and if I built another one, I would do what I'm talking about. Build a fiberglass one. So you got your mold. You wax your mold. Slop on a coat of polyester resin. Put on a sheet of mat on there put a, some mat on there that's that undirectional cloth stuff it's not cloth it's matting it's just like chopped fiberglass layered up and they starch it is all they do put a coat of that on take you some roving some thick roving fiberglass roving that's the interweave stuff lay a coat of that on and then top it with another mat that will give you probably a good quarter inch and now you've got, and then when that sets up, all you got to do is run your body grinder right along the bottom, top sides, and I'll cut it out, trim it off, take any rough, snaggy edges off of it, spray paint it, and now you've got it. Now you've got your basic frame. You've got a nice lightweight frame. Go to Hobby Lobby, get you some nice heavy canvas like this. Go to Home Depot, Lowe's, and get your eyelets. 
smack them in get you some cord run some holes here you see what i did i did a square knot is what i did here i did a square knot and then i backed it up with a knot on the ends and then i melted it so that's that's in there it that knot won't come off i just made a loop you see here what i did i just made a i doubled the line i put it through the eyelet came back through the thing and knotted it up took me 15 minutes got that rigged up the straps that were rotted out on this old pack, I just went to the hardware and picked up some webbing. This is some good heavy-duty stuff here. Even these snaps. I've even put these on tree steps, believe it or not, guys. And I made some bear paws. Here's, some, here's a bear paw. I've used these. I don't really like them. I don't really like these. These are called bear paws. There was a guy actually out there selling them at one time. You see what I did here? I think this is three inch piping. I took some indoor outdoor carpeting. I cut a little slot in there with a Dremel tool. And I ran this strapping through with these buckles, these plastic buckles, snapped on, adjustable. And I put the, this one up toward the top and you see you mount that right to a tree, you come around the tree and you cinch that up. Then you put your foot here. You not only got camouflage with the, with the material, the indoor outdoor material, I just hot glued that. All I did was hot glue that carpeting on there. Trimmed it out, left, left a little crowd here and then folded it in and hot glued it in. I made about 15 of these things and actually I climbed a few trees with it. But I really didn't like it. I really didn't like it. Anyway, you live and learn, right? Anyway, back to this. I did put a breast. I added a breast clip here, right here to this. So this can snap in. It's adjustable, okay? So that's that. Okay, this is the back side. And I just threw this on here, this strap. I had some extra clips here. This will come off. I'll, I'll, I'll get this more. This is temporary. Like I say, I'm still in the building process here with this thing. All right. I will attach this to when I'm all done. But the theory is here, you see. You see how this comes off? There's where your butt's going to sit right here. I cut a piece of quarter-inch plywood. And it's 14 inches square. And I came up, I was going to go for 16 inches, but then I said, well, I really don't need that. It's a little overkill. So I went with 14 square. I probably could have radius these corners. Probably will yet radius these. And I probably will put some preservative on here. Right now, this padded seat, you can get these. These little thermal pads, you, I'm sure I've seen them all over the place. Walmart's got any of your hunting shops have them. They're for turkey hunting. They're for seal, you know, whatever hunting. You sit on the ground with them. If you guys up north, you've seen them. Uh, you've set, so you don't have to set your ass in snow. You can put these down. So I had this in stock for turkey hunting. And all I did here to put it on here, I took some, I had some, uh, uh, super glue. I just put a bunch of super glue and went bam. There it is. Okay. Got that in there Here is actually my saddle Here is my saddle right here and this looks a little bit crazy here It looks a little confusing with all the ropes dig digits and widgets and whatnot But here is the saddle you can get these on Amazon. They're cheap it's called Hunt Hunt Armor. It's the name of the saddle, Hunt Armor. And all I did is took four carriage bolts. Of course, the round head is on the inside where your butt's going. Here's my leg straps here. And what I did is put in four. Put in four holes. These are one inch long quarter inch carriage bolts i have a little brass washer i have a lock washer and nut now to put the holes in this i use my heat little wood burner 
and actually it broke on the last hole for whatever reason the tip the tip failed so this is basically garbage they're cheap i've got another one here somewhere but it 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 melt it it broke at the last hole and i just melted the hole out with that through this fabric and not only when i centered it so i put a center line here on this 14 inch square i put a center line on it so i could line up my saddle and i just positioned this thing right in the middle okay now you're probably wondering steve oh you're going to have chafing here I will keep an eye on the chafing situation. If I do, I'll remedy that with something. Maybe I will uh, Gorilla Tape the heck out of that to keep chafing down. I may do that anyway. Put Gorilla Tape here, a couple layers to keep chafing down. But this saddle is where all of your integrity of this thing is when it comes around. Uh, and, you, and you lock into this thing. Here's your bridge. This is the bridge on this thing. It's, it's done in with a carabiner. Uh, it's, I've got a Persic knot on it. I don't like Persics on these things. What I, I'll probably do once I get into this, I'll put a Ropeman on here. A Ropeman 1. Ropeman 1 is a very nice trick. You can make your bridge a little longer. And you put a knot on the on the box on the bottom now. Don't don't run a ropeman without a knot, in case that thing could slip off the end and then you're coming out of the tree and dropping 20 feet on your head. No, have a knot or you're not going to come out. This is Am Steel Bridge in here. Am Steel is the only thing you want to use here for safety. That is Am Steel. That is not Am Steel, but that's a highly rated rope. That's my tether line. That tether line goes in, and it goes in with a Madrock uh, Mad Safeguard. This is called a Madrock Safeguard. Uh, these are a little pricey. They're $100, but they're well worth it. You can not only ascend with this, you can descend with it up and down the tree with these things. It has a lever on here. We'll demo that later on another video. But I'm just right here now giving you the details on this so you can build one if you like uh, or you can go out and drop you can go out and drop uh, $440 or whatever it is for the uh, J JX3. Yeah, that's what it's going to cost you, JX3. Alright, so this is the back side. What you're looking at here is the back side of this rig. So we bolted it in. And while I was at it, I centered this up, the saddle, and I just took the, I took the hot burner, and I, once I centered it, I needed to pipe, know where I'd pile it in the hole, so I just melted through and burnt the wood also. That way I could take it off, drill that, and, and mounted it up. So that's secure. I feel like this is going to be extremely safe. You're going, Steve-O, this is dangerous. I don't think so for the simple fact that this saddle is well made in all these points on here. I wouldn't feel safe if I knew that this saddle was not, you know, up to speed. But you wouldn't necessarily have to do a saddle here. You could actually come up with uh, webbing, you know, your, your heavy duty stuff, you're like your ratchet strap webbing you can get you could create this same thing with a, the with a wood, bolt it in like this, and come up, create create your, your uh, lineman's rope. On this particular saddle, you're not, you got two points here. You've got, a, you, got a, uh, you got a lineman's rope, plus you've got your persic loop, and they're all tied in to this. They're all tied in. You'll notice that that this the uh, lineman rope is attached to this top one and this inner one which is your bridge line and these terms i'm telling you, you're probably confused about them but if you go out and start studying climbing they'll talk about this stuff see this webbing here this is regular seat belt type webbing and you could use seat belt material Yes, you could build this. You could go to a junkyard, for that matter, and, and cut out seat belts. 
that look good, of course. And you will have this God's plenty of integrity on that material, okay? And you can run two straps. You can run one here and one here, and you go to a machine, sh go to a sewing shop where they do upholstery work and have them sew this up for you. And you could create your own, okay? This happens to be mule tape. I'm sure you guys have seen mule tape. It's been around for freaking ever. I don't have, uh, they call this uh, lube bullion, and, and this stuff is rated extremely high. Back in the day, I used a long line shark, and I used this material. I had over, I had two miles of this. I ran long lining sharks. This stuff will hold up unbelievably. Uh, I actually ran it through some copper copper naphthate back in the day all of my main line and I use this for main line This stuff is extremely but all I did is run through and what I did also here I just I had some I had some aluminum It's like I don't know. What is this three sixteenths? Uh, one inch strapping aluminum. I had one on each side and you'll see here. I put a knot here I drilled a quarter inch hole both sides and put it right through the wood. And I put the knot here because the pressure coming down from this thing, uh, I got a knot there pushing down on it. It just helped the integrity of this plywood. It get, gets you a little more bite on the plywood. We're not talking a lot of st structural strength here because all the structural strength is in this is in this saddle right here that you're attaching yourself to the tree with a tether line. This is basically just to tow the thing into the woods, okay? That's it. Now, I bought extra to make this adjustable. Okay, to make this thing adjustable to where you're in the tree and you want your back your back to lean back, whatever position you want. What I'm gonna do is come off of here, probably, I'm probably going to attach up here. I've gotta get in the tree to find out where I wanna want this at. I'm probably gonna come through here and attach another clip. I've got extra clips line here and snap clips here. These are, these are some serious heavy-duty things here. These are the same type I'm using on those steps, by the way. I was climbing 20 feet in the air with them bear paws. This stuff right here. I, I bought a big roll of it at one time, but he didn't have it. He had these in 8-foot chunks. 8-foot long pieces. So I bought these. These will I'll create on the side of this to where... This is how it's going on your back, and here's what you end up with. Here's what you end up with. You're sitting here in this thing, and I've already went out to the tree out back here, and what? Uh, and I did this, but see now you're going to want you're going to want some adjustment here. If you want to take a little snooze in the tree, you can loosen that up and come back to a comfortable position. My head's going to hit right about here. Now, later on, I may figure, well, hell, I need a little pad right here for resting your head. But this thing will be adjustable with these straps over there that I can use. They will come around, they will come around the, uh, the bridge. The bridge lines. Your bridge line is going to be plugged in. And the, the next thing I will do, I'll probably, when I'm climbing the tree, I'll snap those bridge line, uh, my, my adjustment lines here. I will snap them loosely on the bridge. When I get in the tree and my, I'm positioned, then you can adjust them accordingly. So that's it. That's where we're at right now with this rig. I think this is going to work out. Absolutely fantastic. And uh, 
So I don't have much to do on it. The other beauty part of this deal is, I will show you this. There's one other thing too, the, J the JX3 has, and I'm probably gonna rig it up on here. And that will be a fork. The JX3 has a fork. It comes out here like this. It sticks out, but it's got a turn knob on it that you can adjust from the top side here. And what it, all it is, I've seen it, all it is, it looks like a three quarter inch box material about, I'm gonna say probably six inches long and it's bolted down to the seat area. And there's a knob here, just a single knob. It'll be easy to rig up. There'll be a little welding involved. I got a welder. I have a welder guy, let's put it that way. And you can loosen the knob and run it out and it'll run, extends out about yay far. Probably, I think you can get like six inches out of there, out of that fork. And then it retracts down underneath underneath here well what it does it's got a fork on it and it hits the tree that keeps your knees off of the tree very cool feature on that thing so the jx3 it's got a lot of cool stuff on it but here's the other thing with this what you can do when you get ready to pack up got all this lines all these freaking lines coming in here right take all these lines they're not in use all your pack stuff comes all on the inside here just like a JX3 this is what happens with JX3 all this stuff comes inside here like this all the this is your leg leg straps all come in here I can take I can take all of my tether line that's a 30 foot tether line if I get in trouble in the height of that tree I can take that safeguard Madrock safeguard and repel all the way to the ground because I have a 30 foot tether I see all these guys out there See all these guys out there with six, eight foot tether line. Well, they're 20 feet up a tree. If something happens and you need to get to the bottom of the tree in a hurry, you can use your mad rock, right? And the other thing you can do, they use a six, eight foot tether line. Well, I've got 30 some feet of tether line. I can go all the way down to the ground. A lot of guys take and run this through, go around the tree, run this back through and bring it up tight. Well, that's fine and dandy, but the problem is there, uh, getting it installed up there. With this, you can go up, open your carabiner and, and bring it your carabiner around the tree snap it in now you've created your loop to go around the tree the problem with that is with a carabiner it wants to slide around on you say you're up there and you get it tight it's fine once you put pressure on it your body weight's on there it's going to stay hugged to the tree but if it loosens a slightly it'll slip on the tree so i came up and made a my own clip they have these out there but you know, Steve, I was into DIY, so what I did is took a sliver of pipe, PVC pipe, and I just cut it long. This is probably eight inch, 10 inches long. And I took a punch, I heated it up with a heat gun, created an eye first here. And then I came down a little bit, created another eye, and then made basically a big clothespin. With this scenario, once you get up there, you can just snap that on like so now it doesn't slide down the tree it stays right there so you don't have to buy their umpteen dollar fifteen dollar whatever clothespin you can make one okay and this is just a piece of paracord uh, on there 
and and it's and it's put here when you when you want to descend and you want this is still up in the tree and you've got your clothespin on there well it's going to be stuck up there right that's where this guy comes in you you can come down out of the tree come down all the way down out of the tree and you can snap this in over here on this side and you got paracord to go all the way to the ground you jerk on that and this clothespin will snap out and then you can pull the whole line all the way to the bottom yeah so we're getting rigged up here this is going to be pretty cool I believe we'll put it to work there's still my legs getting leg is still screwed up but I think working it I want to avoid going to any doctors because they're going to say yeah you you are a candidate for the Ted Nugent uh, knee replacement I'm going to say look sir I've never been a rock star and I've never jumped off amplifiers and slid across the stage on my kneecap so do we really want to go there you know anyway I talked to one of my old hunting buddies yesterday in Michigan I haven't talked to him in over a year called him up he's he's 82 he's 82 and I ran into him in the 60s he's he's just as funny as, as the day I first met him um coon hunter and he uh of course he don't coon hunt anymore he's I said how's it going old old coon hunter he says it sucks it sucks I said well how bad does it suck and he said it really sucks I said, how old are you, Earl? He said, 82. He had to think about it. I'm 82. He said, man, it sucks getting old. I said, what's wrong? He said, oh, my damn knee's going out. I said, man, uh, we must be having some ESP here or something because I've been having knee trouble. Anyway, we went, and, we went and had some good stories to tell and whatnot. And, and he was bitching about all the wolves up there in northern Michigan. There was 30, 40 hunters went up there, and out of 40 hunters, uh, they killed one deer in the UP. And I said, is that the reason everybody's selling their cabins in Michigan? Uh, pretty much, yeah. The state, the DNR, uh, uh, let all these wolves loose. Uh, they're, they're, they're the geniuses, and now we don't have any deer. I said, well, it's, I, I said, well... I don't know. I said uh, they're doing a lot of that stuff. I, I said we got we got bear problems in Florida. And nobody wants to address that or open a season on them. But anyway, we had a lot of back and forth. It was a fun talk. He said, "I you made my day calling me up, Steve. Oh, I appreciate it." He says, "Talk to me again sometime soon." I said, "I'll do it, Earl." So anyway, 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 that was a fun thing, but. So we'll see how this goes here. I, I believe, I think we got a program going on here, guys. I really do. You can build this thing. And see, you can stash all your rope under there, all your goodies under there. Throw this on your back. And I don't, I don't know, guys. Look at this. This thing don't weigh, I mean, I could add another pound there with that rope, but this thing don't weigh doodly squat. Nothing. This is probably. This is probably uh, less weight. I think they said the GX3 is 20-some pounds. I don't think this thing, I don't believe this thing guy weighs over 10 pounds. I really don't. Uh, I wouldn't be a bit surprised, you know, a bit worried with this quarter inch for my seat. I did run the, uh, I didn't run the, let's see, what did I do here? It looks like I ran the grain this way on the plywood and I'm sitting this way so that's the way it looks I may have to take this back off but like I said all I did was shoot some super glue on it and slapped it down so it's sitting there all you need is something temporary sitting there and I've got a strap here where you can strap this down and uh, throw this thing on your back because when you pick this up you're going to be picking it up this way see 
So I'll rig that up also. I'll get those adjustment straps in there for the side so we can uh, we can adjust this thing up and uh, my leg gets a little better here. I'm going to fine tune this for you guys. I'm going to fine tune it and we'll get in the tree and show you the options on it, what I've done, what not. But yeah, you could come up with this little this little thing here. You 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 could even I, you know, that's a little industrial strength making a fiberglass one, but for me, I played with a lot of fiberglass back in the day. I used to do a lot of reproduction uh, fish in my taxidermy business. We were doing uh, uh, reproduction fish and whatnot. So I and boat repair. I was a commercial fisherman for a while and uh, jack of all trades. And I I made boats actually. I made boats with fiberglass. Uh, we built them. We made mullet skiffs. We've done um, gill net boating skiffs. We've done all kinds of things with fiberglass. So it was a little fiberglass project like I was telling you about with a piece of plywood and, and shape that thing. Because you could sit there quarter inch plywood, guys, and, and a cup of cheap tuba for it, put them on there, get them, get them out here where you can, uh, where you can uh, radius that thing with a, a gr body grinder get this rounded off and then you can uh, then you can coat it with wax get some car wax a mirror glaze car wax and tune that up and uh you've got a mold you can make these you could you could pop out several of them matter once you made the mold uh, if your buddies wanted to get together and, and you could have a DIY project and knock these out. These, this strapping material, you can get this anywhere. Like I said, you can get seat belt material. This is some heavy duty, heavy duty type stuff here. Uh, but I don't think you got to go more than quarter inch on that. Uh, very simple system. So that's the project for today, guys. Hope you like it. I think I like it. I'll see you soon. See you on the next one. Be happy. Be strong. We got to keep getting on. Maybe we can shoot some deer this year. I don't know. See ya.